Hey witches, welcome to Tarot 101. This series is for tarot beginners or seasoned readers who just want a refresher. And without further ado, let's begin. We all like the idea of being able to see into the future so that we can foresee obstacles in our path. Tarot cards have been used for centuries as a way of granting us such insights. Think of the cards as a conduit and a tarot reader as a magical counselor who uses them to focus and enhance their intuition. Tarot works because when you ask a question, the answer to your problem is already present in your subconscious mind. Concentrating on the question brings that knowledge to the surface and draws you to choose certain cards. It forces you to confront negatives that you may usually choose to ignore and puts apparently positive aspects in context, helping reveal the bigger picture. Through understanding tarot, you will gain a better understanding of yourself and the world around you. Some people believe that the insights seen during a tarot reading are communicated physically through the subconscious, while others believe that spirits act as interpreters, communicating images of other times and places to the tarot reader, who acts as a medium to reveal their message. Whichever school of thought that you choose to follow, tarot cards act to focus and direct our psychic abilities. The stronger the connection you feel to your deck, the more easily these messages will pass. Consequently, you may like to spend a few minutes meditating as you hold your cards, bonding them to your personal energies and opening your mind to the intuitive messages you receive. Some people like to put cards underneath their pillow. You can put the whole deck under it or do one card at a time each night just to familiarize your subconscious with the tarot deck. Did you know that you can do single card readings? You can give a simple tarot reading based on just one card. Simply spread the pack and pick one at random, as you would like from a deck of playing cards. The single card you pick will give you a snapshot of your current situation, suggesting through the images whether the core of the problem is down to emotional issues, cups, intellectual concerns, swords, energy and activity, wands, or health and wealth, pentacles. If you don't have your own tarot deck, you can carry out a single card reading by closing your eyes and randomly selecting a card on your, uh, like if you have a picture of the tarot or even like on your tablet or computer. Um, you won't be able to get a detailed understanding of all the issues involved, but it may help highlight what you need to concentrate on. Before you deal the cards, spend a few minutes to consider exactly what you want from the tarot. The tarot is a wonderful tool for understanding your true feelings and motivations because it reveals what is usually hidden in your subconscious mind. Doing a tarot reading for yourself or a friend can help you see the most effective way of dealing with the situation and even what that situation could lead to in the future. You can also use tarot to answer questions, provided that they are clearly stated, to identify obstacles that might be in your way or draw attention to benefits that can be gained. Remember, act responsibly. Tarot cannot sort out your life for you. However, it can give you helpful advice and be used as a tool for gaining insight, but should not be used as a crutch that encourages you to abstain from taking responsibility for yourself and your actions. When you see tarot cards for the first time, you'll probably wonder how such small cards can contain so much information. How do tarot readers remember everything? especially when many cards look virtually the same. Trust your instincts. The images on the tarot cards act as a visual clue to their meanings. The key to reading tarot is not learning by root the meanings of all 78 cards, but feeling your way through what each card says to you. When you first see a tarot card, take a minute, look at it closely. What do you think it's telling you? Your first guess may be closer to the true meaning than you think. No image on a tarot card has been placed there by accident. Every symbol, including letters and numbers, is telling you something special. 
the numbers. Most tarot cards have a number as well as simply a guide to the card's place in a sequence. These numbers have magical significance of their own. People. Many tarot cards contain images of people. This can give you clues as to the kind of people who will influence your life. A mature woman may represent a mother or a teacher. A traveler in a foreign clothes may mean that a visitor is about to call. Words. Some tarot cards have the name of the card written on them. This is really just to help you remember which card it is, although obviously terms such as hermit or the lovers immediately conjures up all sorts of meanings in your minds. And they all have a main picture. The image that takes up most of the tarot card is where much of the symbolism can be found, but it may be hidden deep in the background detail. Look for the elements. Earth, air, fire, and water feature prominently in many tarot cards, as does the weather. All of these have their own symbolic meaning. Look at objects. Tarot cards often contain objects such as cups or swords. These have specific meanings that we will explain in the future. Actions. People on tarot cards are rarely just standing still. Their actions also can give you clues to the card's meanings. Is the person coming or going? Is he looking forward or does he have his back to everything? Is he laughing or crying? Is he working hard? Is he resting? Expressions. The people's expressions are another clue. If they are surrounded by wealth, do they look happy? Do they look smug? Bored? Are they hoarding money? Are they sharing it? So just really try and look at the symbolism and try and connect with your card or each card as much as you can. Now, not all tarot cards will carry as many visual clues as others. On some, the meanings are hidden, allowing the tarot reader to hold the secret knowledge that only they can reveal. You'd need a photographic memory to remember all 78 tarot cards individually, but luckily there's an easier way. The single set of 78 cards consists of two parts, one of which can be further broken down into four subsections. The first part has 22 picture cards, and this is known collectively as the Major Arcana. The other part, the Minor Arcana, has four sets of 14 cards. The minor arcana resembles a regular deck of playing cards. You know, like the kind that you, you use to play poker, go fish, whatever. Each of the four sets it contains is called a suit. There are suits of swords, which represent spades, wands, represent clubs, pentacles, represent diamonds, and the cups represent hearts. Each contains 10 numbered cards, a page, which represents the jack, a knight, a queen, and a king. The Major Arcana. The 22 Major Arcana cards are each highly illustrated. In fact, the Joker in a modern deck of playing cards may have evolved from the Major Arcana tarot card, The Fool. The Minor Arcana consists of 56 cards, consisting also of four sets of 14. The Suit of Pentacles, 14 cards, Suit of Swords, Suit of Cups, Suit of Wands, each contain 14 cards. Now, the Major Arcana contains 22 cards. They are highly illustrated, and all but the Fool are numbered in sequence. Now, each suit contains 14 cards, as I said before. These cards in the, main, or in the minor arcana are called pip cards. And these go from ace to ten, and then you've got four court cards. Um, the cards are numbered from one ace to ten. And then the four court cards are page, knight, queen, and king. And these are in each suit. Okay. So, as I've said before, the Major Arcana comprises of 22 tarot picture cards that have no equivalents in a playing card deck. 
These cards represent a symbolic story of the journey of the soul told in pictures. They begin with card zero, the fool, representing the innocence with which we are born. And they reach completion with card 21, the world, making a new cycle of experience. Major Arcana in Tarot Spreads. The cards in the Major Arcana reveal the lessons that you learn and reflect characteristics within yourself that you can tap into and explore. A predominance of Major Arcana cards in a tarot reading shows you that the issue or question that you are currently exploring is extremely significant. The Major Arcana can also be used on its own for tarot readings about important life issues. The Major Arcana can be split up into five groups of similar cards for easy reference and in order to achieve a more in-depth understanding of their significance. People. These cards tell us about people who are significant in our lives and also remind us of our characteristics that we may have within ourselves. Um, for example, the Empress. The Empress can signify a maternal figure or it can mean that you're about to enter a creative phase. Or like the Hermit, the Hermit can mean that you need time alone to make decisions or that others view you as some kind of an inspirational guide. All right, um, the group number two would be concepts. Now these cards advise us to observe our attitude. Um, like for instance, justice. Justice can indicate that you're concerned with issues of fairness. Or temperance. Temperance is a reminder to center yourself and stay focused while a situation is being resolved. Or judgment. This advises you to step back and look at the big picture instead of getting stuck in the details. All right, and the third group that it is split into is change and transition. And a couple of these cards would be like the death and the tower card. These cards inform us that major changes are imminent and these will have powerful repercussions. Change is necessary to our growth and development but we often resist it due to fear of the unknown. So say if you got the death card, uh, this in fact shows us that a sudden transformation can only occur through our letting go of someone or something that's important to us, but that we've outgrown. Or like say if you get the tower, this card indicates external changes that create upheaval in our lives. It's good to remember that such changes lead us to look at life from a new perspective. All right, and the fourth group are qualities. Some cards denote certain qualities that help or hinder. Uh, for example, the hanged man. He represents suspension or he's telling us, hang on a little longer, hold on tight. The star, this could suggest wishing on a star or just to trust in your hopes and in your dreams. If you got the moon, um, like the moon when it's uh, crescent, some things can be hidden, uh, mysterious. If you get the sun, this could represent a sunny outlook. And the fifth cycle, or fifth group rather, is cycles. Because life moves in cycles of conception, birth, growth, decay, death, and rebirth. The major arcana cards remind us of this. For instance, the fool. This is the beginning of a major arcana, the first step that propels us forward into the new experience. So that's why in a lot of decks, the fool is number zero and at the beginning. Some decks you'll find it at the end and that just represents the cycle of life. Uh, or another cycle, uh, card could be the world and this is like a culmination of the cycle but it's not the end because it sets the fool onto another new cycle which is why some decks have them in the beginning and some at the end uh, so I really hope that uh, you guys have learned a little bit and I hope you have some fun with your tarot and gain some insights trust me the more you practice 
the better you're, it's going to get, you know, uh, the more that you're just going to be in tune with your cards and with the symbolism and everything will just start falling into place. Uh, well, that's it for this Tarot 101. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, blessed be.